Hey everyone, welcome back. And this is my review of Kill Law 2, episode 8, entitled I Will Wipe My Own Tears. Wow. Fuck. Well, this week's episode of Kill La Kill. Uh, how. Uh, how do I. explain this exactly? <laughs> um, eh, you're pr probably gonna be shocked by this, but. I actually really enjoyed this episode of Kill La Kill. Mm. Yeah, I actually enjoyed this episode of Kill La Kill. Oh my god, just... Why is it doing this to me? It's making me fucking enjoy it. Well... Okay, like, I doubt this is going to last. I have no hope of this lasting, my enjoyment of the series. But hey, it might, it, it, it might fucking impress me, you know, or, or, or it might shock me. But not counting on it at the moment, but you never know, I suppose. So anyways, let me just get through the summary here first before I drag this intro out any longer. Alright, so yeah, anyways, Satsuki announces her new election system in which students must survive a seven day battle against each other in order to stand out on top and earn Goku uniforms, sending the entire school into a state of emergency. Meanwhile, Ryuko takes Mako to the ruins of her old house where she tells her about the circumstances surrounding her father's death. Finding no further, which I have to tell you, it was actually kind of sad, hearing the backstory, even though it was kind of fast-paced, the backstory was, it was still kind of sad, so they actually were able to invoke emotion out of me here, they are able to make me emote a little bit, which is something I never thought I'd say about this fucking series, at least not this particular emotion, <laughs> okay. Finding no further clues in the basement where she found Satsuki, even though she kind of, or where she found, found Senketsu, where, where, even though she kind of just burst through it and didn't even look around. She just left, like, really? Ryuko and Mako... Uh, Ryu, Ryu, Ryuko and Mako head home, only to only for their scooter to run out of gas. Uh, Mako's father uh, gave it to them, or let them borrow it, or whatever, something like that. As though they end up encountering the disciplinary committee chair and one of the elite four, Ira Gamaguri, who, having just attended his driving, attained his driving license and is taking the week off, offers to take care of to 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 take them to a gas station. Dur during their drive, they are attacked by the Automotive and Airsoft club Clubs who are t targeting Ira's three-star Goku uniform, Shackle Regalia. Recalling how he first met Satsuki, Ira unleashes his uniform, which is also a really great flashback, I think. Kind of quick, but still really great, you know. And I'm actually going to talk about that in a little bit because it's kind of interesting as well in terms on Sats Satsuki's end. All right. Anyways, though, Iro unleashes his uniform, which uses the power of masochism to evolve to evolve into Scourge Regilia and lay waste to his opponents. Yeah, it's kind of creepy. That's kind of the only part of the episode I really don't like, honestly. After a week passes, Hon Honoji's strongest strongest symbol for a symbol for the sudden death runoff election, with only Ryuko and the Elite Four making their way to the top. 
There, Satsuki challenges Ryuko to defeat each of the Elite Four in exchange for details concerning her father's death, her first opponent being Ira. Which kind of sucks for him because she kind of already saw his ability before. And that ends the summary of this week's episode of Kill Law Kill. So, what about this episode? Well, I'm going to talk really briefly about that thing about Satsuki that I mentioned before in terms of the in terms of Ira's flashback. I don't know what to think of Satsuki's character anymore because originally I just didn't like her. She just seemed like a generic villain, a real bitch. But in that flashback, you know, it, she there's basically some bullies that were picking on this kid, all right, and basically the push on the shove, he would have to commit suicide or his father would be fired from his job, basically. And Ira tried to step in there, but the, but he couldn't prevent the kid from jumping off. The kid jumped off, but there was a trampoline under him, which was set there by Satsuki herself, who made her entrance. I guess, the, I guess this must have been shortly after she initially became the head of the academy, I'm assuming, okay? And, you know, and I, I'm assuming that she killed or at least kicked the shit out of and banished or whatnot, those bullies. But she says something interesting. She says that thugs like you will no longer be tolerated or something along those lines, which tells me that maybe she's not as bad as she seems. Like, I don't know. I really don't know what to think about her character anymore. But that's kind of all I could really get from that. But all in all, like I said before, this episode was actually really good. I was surprised, like, Ibra's ability, I'm not too fond of that, but other than that, it's really good. The animation's fucking incredible, once again, except for the choppiness, which is still there, okay, and later on in the episode, it gets even worse in terms of being choppy, okay, like, seriously, it gets really fucking bad in this episode, but other than that, like, it was really good. I was surprised at how good it was like I really enjoyed it so yeah there was still a little bit of humor in this episode which some of it was kind of funny I guess you know um you know Senketsu almost being suffocated by Mako was kind of humorous none of it was laugh out loud funny but some of it was kind of humorous though I, I felt so yeah but I mean, it's overall really good episode of a kill a kill not expecting this to last, but like I said before, maybe they can maybe they can shock me with the quality in the future. So yeah, but anyways, overall hope you enjoyed this review guys. See you after guys. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.